no genre of film does a sequel quite like the world of horror. From the heyday of the slasher subculture, the emerge of the Scream influenced parodies, to the modern day popularity of found footage and supernatural scares. If there's a popular franchise to milk, the horror world will be on hand to exhaust every single penny out of it. It seems like money is at the heart of every sequel released in the horror world, which has sadly led to more than a few duds being dished out over the years. From Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, to Scream 3, studios rarely show much care or consideration to a franchise or its fans when preparing the film, instead doing their best to push out a release date as quickly as possible and moving on to the next one. There are, thankfully, some exceptions to this, however. From expanding on the mysteries in earlier titles, letting characters loose after being in the shadows, or introducing whole new tones and styles. There are plenty of horror movie sequels that are arguably better than their predecessors. Here's our take on the top 10 horror movie sequels from all movie history. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 most underrated horror movie sequels ever. Number 10, Saw 2. Lee Whannell and James Wan's Saw might have been a surprising success, but its 103 million pound box office against a 1 million budget meant that the announcement of Saw 2 just a year later was anything but a shock to see. Saw 2 had quadrupled the budget of the first film and really does a good job in scaling everything up. While Saw was mainly set in just one small bathroom, its sequel takes place in a big house with each room housing far bigger jigsaw trials and traps. Saw was just as much as a whodunit as it was an outright horror film. However, Saw 2 benefits in a lot of ways because audiences know who the killer is now. And it's undeniable at this point that the franchise lucked out in casting Tobin Bell as the corpse in the first film because he remains one of horror's most interesting and charismatic characters. Saw 2 features more Tobin Bell than any other film in the franchise, exploring his backstory, motives and genius by just sitting him down and letting him work his magic. While the first film will always be remembered as a classic, Saw 2 deserves recognition for paying homage to its roots, while simultaneously making everything feel bigger and more box office. Number 9, Creep 2. In a world where found footage films are some of the most inventive and frustrating in horror, Patrick Bryce and Mark Duplis's Creep series truly is a breath of fresh air. The first film introduces audiences to Duplass's character Joseph, a strange man who kicks off each film by putting out advertisements on Craigslist asking for a cameraman to document his day-to-day -day life. Duplass's performance is undoubtedly the highlight of Creep, creating a character that is, as the name might suggest, seriously creepy. The first Creep film was released in 2014 and was praised for its acting and tension, with Bryce quickly announcing a sequel being in the works. Creep 2 was released in 2017 and recaptures the suspense of the original with its found footage approach, whilst throwing in an extra layer of creepiness with a far more in stride version of Joseph. The mystery around Joseph's instability and motivations are gone by Creep 2, allowing for the film to go full pelt with his craziness from the off. Desiree Akavan comes in as final girl Sarah and is also a great character, fully confident and capable of both standing up for herself and unlocking this killer's psyche. Number 8, Unfriended Dark Web. The Unfriended series might only consider of two entries at the time of this article, but it remains one of the most creative franchises going in the world of horror. The first film follows the story of Blair and her five friends, who are hanging out one night with a Skype call. The whole film is shot from the perspective of what is going on the computer at the time, and features real-world websites such as Skype, Facebook, Spotify, and the particular highlight of the film, Chat Roulette. It would be argued that the execution of such an original and unique premise was not as great as it could have been. However, the characters are all fairly believable in how they act online and the eerie storyline is still pretty powerful. Unfriended Dark Web was released as a sequel in 2018 and features an entirely new set of characters and an entirely different plot. From spooky ghosts to the somewhat scarier internet hackers, Dark Web definitely has some of the flaws as a movie but is still undeniably gripping. Fans of the first film will love the familiar direction and style in play from the original, but even viewers who didn't enjoy the original will have a chance to give the series another shot with an entire different film in dark web. Number 7, Bride of Frankenstein. Arguably the most influential and important villain in all of horror history, Frankenstein didn't technically make his debut with Universal Studios' 1931 film. However, it was undoubtedly the most widespread and impactful release to feature the giant undead monster. Everything from the it's alive line to the hunchback henchmen to the gothic black and white art style has become iconic and the influence can be seen in certain films in all 
genres to this day. And whilst its follow-up sequel, Bride of Frankenstein, received similar levels of praise following its release in 1935, it arguably hasn't found itself with the same levels of impact as its predecessor. The film takes place immediately after the original and is rooted around Dr. Frankenstein and his mentor Dr. Pretorius's quest to once again create life from death and give the monster from the first film a companion. The film once again features impressive gothic art styles and wacky science fiction and probably includes a more tragic, thought-provoking art for the monster to go through. With terror, wonder and tragedy all swinging about in every scene, Bride of Frankenstein, much like the monster, deserves more love than it gets. Number 6 Predators. It's fair to say that most of the films that have followed on from the original Predator have fallen well short of the mark, with there being a special place in hell reserved for the 2018 release in particular. With so much mediocrity on show, it's genuinely surprising to see how little love 2010's Predators receives. Directed by Nimrod Antal and starring the likes of Adrian Brody, Topher Grace and Alice Braga, the film follows a group of skilled warriors from all over the world who are abducted and dropped onto an alien world. Locked in a deadly battle of survival against three predators attempting to hunt them down. Unlike all the other films in the franchise that focus on one predator coming to Earth and causing havoc, Predators is very much a film for the fans in terms of serving up new and exciting layers to this race of warriors. From the alien worlds they hunt across to the manners in which they conduct their sport, Predators adds more to the series than any other movie and is a pretty thrilling ride throughout its runtime. Number 5 Halloween 2 Taking place during the very same night as the original film, it might be time to start viewing John Carpenter and Deborah Hill's Halloween 1 and 2 as one big story, rather than two separate releases. With pretty much every single individual from the first classic returning for the sequel, Halloween 2 is naturally creepy and a lot of fun to watch. The film takes place almost exclusively at Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, and with Michael Myers now widely known to be the mindless killer from the original film's kill spree, really lets loose with the improvised practical effects, Gloria kills and a far more impressive collection action-focused sequences. It does, however, still contain plenty of Carpenter's tropes that made the first film so creepy, perhaps the most notable of these being the use of first-person camera shots again. Halloween 2 was originally intended to be the conclusion of the Michael Myers, Dr. Loomis and Laurie Strode storylines. It introduced the idea of Michael being Laurie's brother, something presented in every Myers movie excluding the 2018 release, and rounds off the original arc of the classic trio in a pretty conclusive way. For those who aren't fans of long slasher franchises, Halloween 1 and 2 are both nicely made and well worth their place as horror classics. Number 4 Child's Play 2 The original Child's Play, released back in 1988, turned itself from a cult classic into one of the biggest blockbuster franchises in the worlds of horror. Despite the silly sounding premise of a killer doll coming to life, the original film quickly established itself as one of the most terrifying films of the decade. With its impressive animatronics and fresh take on a genre that had been increasingly dominated by cheap sleazy slashers. With Child's Play making over $44 million at the box office in 1988, a follow-up film was always going to be on the cards. Child's Play 2 was released exactly two years later in 1990 and is, in many ways, a far better film than its predecessor. Alex Vincent returns as Andy Barclay, but the action has moved from a small apartment in the city to a much larger foster home. The tone and feel of Child's Play 2 feels much more consistent, introducing more comedic one-liners from Chucky and more elaborate and out outlandish methods in which he kills his victims. Child's Play 2 also doesn't feature any of the irritating who-done-it aspects of the first film, being able to let loose its killer doll right from the opening scene. Number 3 Final Destination 5 By the time Final Destination 5 rolled around in 2011, it was set to be the final instalment in what had become one of horror's most stale series. The third and fourth films had particularly been singled out for their lack of inventiveness and increasingly cheap looks, resulting in the fifth film being declared the last than the franchise before its release. It must have been a case for it being all hands on deck and going out with a bang, because Final Destination 5 is undoubtedly the best film since the original. The movie follows the story of Sam Lawton and Molly Harper, who, along with a handful of their friends, survive the collapse of a bridge thanks to a premonition of the future, but are then picked off by death itself in elaborate and gory ways. Final Destination 5 strips everything back to basics, paying homage to the original film with its kills, themes and awesome tie-in through its final scene sequence, whilst adding a far more crisp modern look to the direction from behind the camera. It's unknown whether there will be another Final Destination movie made, however. If this is the end, they certainly went out in style. Number 2 The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 The Texas Chainsaw Massacre series hasn't been a franchise for good
with sequels over the years. Ever since the series started back in 1974, each sequel film that studios have pushed out have felt cheap, dull, and uninspired. Instead of pushing the boat out and attempting to bring in new ideas, Chainsaw films have consistently rehashed shots and sequences and added to the series' overly complicated continuity. One film that cannot be said about in the franchise, however, is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Toby Hooper, creator of the first film, had decided that he didn't want to make just another cheap slasher and instead began experimenting with a more outlandish black comedy approach. Texas Chainsaw 2 was released a whole decade after the first film and only made $8 million against a budget of $4.7 million and received some fairly mixed reviews from critics. However, the improved gore is good fun, the added depth to Leatherface's character is interesting to see and the comedic tone definitely hits more than it misses. On the whole, whilst it might not be the perfect movie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 deserves far more love than it gets. In a franchise of shots and sequences being reused over and over again, Texas Chainsaw 2 should be praised for its ludicrous and crazy amount of originality and inventiveness. Number 1. A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge. A Nightmare on Elm Street arguably became horror's most mainstream series in the 1980s, with Freddy Krueger's wisecracks and increasingly imaginative dream sequences landing him a TV show, music video appearances, and plenty of iconic cultural references. In fact, the series became so big that by the middle of the 1980s it was being dubbed the MTV Nightmare. The one film in the Nightmare series that has always been overlooked, however, is the very first sequel in the franchise, Freddy's Revenge. Unlike every other film in the series that features the same characters and continuity, Freddy's Revenge is much more of a standalone movie, with only a couple of mentions to the original throughout the film. The film follows the story of Jesse, a teenage boy who, after moving into the old Elm Street once lived on by Nancy Thompson, begins being haunted by Freddy Krueger in his dreams, as well as being one of the first films in history to contain quite a few homoerotic images. Freddy's Revenge is another solid addition to the Nightmare franchise. It contains arguably the darkest Freddy to date, with the quips and jokes held way back, the pacing is particularly fast for a nightmare film, and the action sequences, with a special mention for the pool party sequence, are a lot of fun to watch. And that's our list. What do you think of these horror movie sequels? Were they underrated? Leave us a comment down below and let us know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten from What Culture, and I will see you in the next video.